Maria Rua, a violinist with the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. In planning my practice, I first organize myself and figure out what music I need to work on that week or for the next few weeks. I make an order of priority for the day, and if I don't get to something, I make sure I put it first on the list for the following day. I like practicing in a closed space where I won't get distracted by people passing by. If the practice room has a door with a window, I try facing the other way. This often means practicing in a very small room, which is not ideal. So if I find the opportunity from time to time to practice in a big hall, I always take it and focus on my sound projection. I always start my practice with scales. I was using a Lamian for the past few years and I felt very comfortable with it. So I recently decided to switch back to car flesh and challenge my system. I think it is important to have a routine but always making sure you're still challenging yourself and keeping things fresh. Every other day, I also work on long tones, on open strings. This helps me focus on getting the best resonance in each string, as well as improving my bow changes. Since I don't do anything with my left hand, it is an opportunity to focus on my bow technique. Even when I'm warming up, I try to make my playing musical. I group notes together and give them direction to the top and down in order to keep a good flow. I definitely want to avoid doing a diminuendo when going high up, which sometimes happens as an instinct. Also, when I do long tones, I try to keep them in rhythm. I use the metronome to make sure I am not taking extra time during bow changes and keep things flowing. When working on a hard passage, I try to break it down and figure out exactly what is the difficulty for this passage. In this excerpt of Bach's Andante from his second sonata for solo violin, the bow technique is especially hard, so I would practice it without the left hand. First, I will work on simply getting the right angle and then add the phrasing that I am planning to do. Before putting it all together, I will make sure my left hand is ready. I can work on it in a few different ways. I may practice it as chords, making sure my intonation is good. Then I might play the melody alone, making sure I have the phrasing figure out. I will also play the accompaniment alone, with the melody in mind and with a good harmonic flow. Last, I will put everything together. It is still hard to listen to all the aspects at once, so I might work on two bars at a time at first and then put together longer sections. Basically, no matter what I'm practicing, I take the time to figure out exactly what the issues are and break things down to overcome them. And I always strive to keep the musicality in my practice, making sure that notes have good direction. I am currently working on designing interactive performances with a string quartet. This is something we do a lot as part of the fellowship in the Civic Orchestra of Chicago, and it can make a huge difference in the way audiences perceive the music. It even helps us performers to understand the music more deeply and enjoy a deeper connection with audiences. It takes a lot of extra time outside rehearsals to plan for these interactive performances but it can be extremely rewarding for all sides. So I would encourage everyone to explore making your performances more interactive. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And make sure you check out some of the other practice tips videos and have fun practicing.